Hello and welcome to another episode of the MIA podcast where we explore the question, will Australian manufacturing ever return to the glory days of the 60s? So uh, this week we have a very special guest. We've got uh, Kieran from Ananda Food. Welcome, Kieran. Hi, John. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for joining. So uh, look, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there. So uh, it's some people would say this this topic of uh, your your industry is is uh, potentially a bit controversial because we've got the word uh, hemp in it. So we'll be exploring topics like uh, how did you get into uh, the government grants, how did you start exporting? And um, I think for me, I love this topic because I think it shows that um, uh, although you do have an ethical ethical product, there's probably a lot of red tape that you went through to go through the exporting process and go through the grant process. And I think a lot of people could potentially benefit. So as I said, uh, welcome, Kieran. Um, so uh, do you want to just give a little bit of background about, about the business and uh, secondly, how you got into business as well? Yes. Okay. So, an under food, as you mentioned, is is a hemp foods business. Um, <clears throat> we have a parent company called Ecofiber Limited, which is uh, has three divisions. Uh, Ecofiber is a, a global hemp business, and we have divisions in the US which uh, work with medicinal hemp (CBD) and also a high tech fiber business over there. Um, we've set up here in food because the legislative pathway for, for the medicinal side was obviously a lot tougher at the time, uh, but food was uh, on its way with legalization in two th late 2017. So uh, we operate uh, within Australia uh, in terms of our growing and processing. We grow with our own genetics, so we are vertically integrated in terms of the full process and owning that. However, we, we don't own the land, we contract growers uh, and use our own seed genetics and lines that give them benefits in the field and then process up in Newcastle um, to produce hemp seeds or dehulled hemp seeds or hemp hearts, hemp seed oil, um, protein powder and a flour. Love it. So uh, quite a quite a quite a varied um, range of products there. Um, and uh, look, I think, um, you know, there's, there's probably a lot of people in Australia who, who probably don't know much about the, the hemp in, industry in Australia. And when we were chatting before, there's this whole, I think there's a, there's a lot of, uh, uh, people in Australia who probably don't realize what, uh, what a huge percentage, uh, food, uh, the food industry is in, in terms of manufacturing in Australia. So, um, do you have the percentages in front of you? If not, we can put them in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd have to put those, I don't know, <clears throat> off the top of my head, but I know it's a significant, it include produce um, and, and the agricultural sector as well. It's a big, big portion of big dollar value. Um, and my background has always been food. I'm a, I'm a microbiologist by trade and came through um, the, the compliance and quality side. Initially, as you probably can tell from the UK, uh, I had three years in Spain and then I've been over here for 16 years. So I, I've worked my way up through food in uh, and in Australia, uh, I've worked in produce, uh, mango growing uh, and harvesting, uh, as well as my recent foray into hemp. So it's it's always um, it's always excited me and interested me the opportunities in food and, and, and always been a challenge, even in the schools and, and colleges where it, it's not even considered with the pupils that there is an industry out there that's uh, a huge opportunity for production managers, for food technologists, for engineers, um, for, for IT it's a great a great opportunity in this sector for food yeah that's that's really good to know because look uh, and I, I think um you know traditionally uh america's probably got most of the focus in terms of like the the hemp industry um and i have to say uh from my understanding the australian sort of uh, uh agriculture and, and food projects has probably gone through a bit of a tough time recently especially with uh, labor shortages and I'm talking more sort of you know like your, your traditional fruit picking and uh, you know uh, uh, supply chain shortages around meat etc um, is hemp one of those industries that has been hit by COVID or is it just in a sort of an, what we'd say an upward uh, trajectory yeah no we've maintained an upward trajectory we sort of you know we had an initial challenge if you look the, the legalization of hemp 
started in November 2017. And we had what I'd describe as a false dawn. There was a huge excitement at the time because of the uh, misconceptions around what hemp food was uh, and people thinking the hemp seed oil would be the CBD. So I think there was a lot of excitement. Those that wanted marijuana legalized were in. Um, and then the, the really the sales dropped right off after that initial excitement. And we've seen steady growth through from sort of mid mid 2018 uh, and continuing through to we're not quite normalized or uh, fully accepted yet, but we we're getting there. Um, and when COVID arrived, we, we did wonder what the impact would be in terms of the retail sales, because we do sell in Coles and Woolworths now. Um, and we did see, we didn't quite see the, the flour, the pasta and the toilet paper lift, but um, we, we did see a, a steady increase. And I think that home cooking and home, the awareness around health was, was more prominent. Um, from a processing point of view at that time, we, we went into, we, we effectively split the factory. So I had a team that worked from home and a team on site that if we could continue operations, if we needed to. So again, that was minimizing risk for us. Um, we might've been slower with me and the, the production manager packing, but we'd have got in there and kept things going. And, and in terms of the seed, we've got that locked away. So we, we'd harvested that, um, and it didn't really interrupt our planting operations. It's relatively labor in, uh, low labor intensity in the field. Um, so we haven't really been impacted. We didn't get out to the growers as often as we'd like. Our prime growing region is Tasmania and we didn't get down there as we'd like to, to meet the growers, but we, we have been working them with them for a long time now. So they're, they're very good growers. They know what they're doing and very well established in, in the processes. So we had the, the odd few questions on the phone, but nothing significant that, that's really tripped us up yeah okay well that's good to know and um yeah good um good to know that it's uh strengthening the uh the tasmanian or potentially strengthening the tasmanian economy because i know they have traditionally been very seasonal um so i guess it gives them another uh another uh a ticket to to ride um so look uh so tell me a bit about the uh the firstly the exporting um process for your business and uh after that we'll have a look at uh, exploring the, the grants as well how does yeah. you kick off the exporting um we, we've got a couple of irons in the fire with export we had <clears throat> what um the prime prime one in our first exports was the us ironically um, although that was made easier, that's um, our medicinal hemp uh, uses our hemp seed oil as um, its base. So we had an easy way into our sister company over there, Ananda Hemp, uh, and Ananda Professional that do do the medicinal hemp products. So they do the extraction and then use hemp seed oil as the base. It's, it's obviously very natural, uh, naturally linked, so a good carrier for those products. So the process for that was actually relatively straightforward in its oil form. Um, it was really, we became FDA registered uh, and there's a process to follow for that for what's called prior notice. Um, and it's a relatively straightforward process there. Uh, when you get into the D-hull seed, it does get a bit more complicated. So our seed goes over to um, New Zealand via Woolworths in the macro brand. Um, and we, we need a license to do that. So the oil is okay that goes over the protein powder because it's been denatured. Um, but we have to show evidence uh, of source um, of the seed and, and prove that it is a denatured product, which it is once it's been dehulled. Uh, but they don't want viable seeds landing landing on the, the docks over there in New Zealand and, and most countries. It's, it's the same coming back into Australia. Um, so there's a bit more paper and there's a license involved in that. Again, we were fortunate we already had that license, which is a Department of Health license because we have the, the, the research and manufacturing licenses uh, and import licenses and export licenses for whole seeds. Uh, so there is a bit involved with, with that one. Um, and then <clears throat> when we start going out to other countries, um, it does get more challenging because the, the word hemp is synonymous with marijuana in a lot of Asian countries. There's no dissociation. Mm. Uh, Singapore, it's still a, a class A drug. It's not, they're not differentiated at all. So you, you have to be very targeted where you go. Uh, there are opportunities over there, um, but um, you, you, you've got to look at your strategy and, and targets um, the, the regions that will, 
will allow it in. And there are a few idi idiosyncrasies around what's allowed. Um, we're, we're just looking at South Korea at the moment. Um, and they allow hemp seed oil, but it has to come from a de hull seed. So we're not allowed to press whole seeds. We have to de hull those seeds first, then press. So a few few odd ones that you have to be very careful of in the process as you, as you walk through the, the different countries. Yeah, okay. So what's, um, I guess, why, why would they source um, Australian products versus somewhere else in the world? Uh, a lot of it would be... Um, our compliance um, and our, our um, food safety um, culture here. We were very strong in that sense. Um, New Zealand's done an awesome job of becoming a great export of its food products and Australia is still seen as, as uncorrupt and clean in terms of its land. But uh, for me, the key is that food safety. I, I, that's something that flows through my business in processing um, and it is, it is with food you've just got to do that to be playing on the park uh, we can hurt so many people if we get it wrong we can hurt categories um, we can hurt big businesses so that is key uh, and the australian framework um, and, and the compliance of that framework broadly um, sets us up well for, for to be seen as, as a as a contender in those countries and seen uh, as a good exporter mm. i think uh like for, from from our research um you know, I think that further cements the, uh, the the thinking that Australia, you know, I guess, and, and New Zealand as well, are uh, producers of from the manufacturing. We're, we're known for our high quality, uh, and I, I, from what I would see, I, I guess that further cements that argument. Absolutely, yes, yeah. It's um, yeah. <clears throat> I, I always separate quality and safety. It's quality management systems do talk to food safety, but I like to separate it because it is, it is very different um, and, and it impacts people very differently. But if you take food safety and quality together, yes, we, <clears throat> we're trusted in that sense. Um, and we, we've got the land to deliver it. Hemp, hemp will grow in, in all regions of Australia, but will it grow, doesn't always grow to the yields that you need to be commercially viable. Uh, that's where our genetics come into play. And, and likewise in the, in the countries, um, that we import into then you know they have challenges with their regions um some of the asian could one of the challenges with hemp is it's a bioaccumulator which means if there are heavy metals in the soil they will they will be brought into that plant and the leaf and seed material so that's a great asset for the plant in terms of one of the uses of hemp is cleaning up um uh dirty soil if you like or in contaminated soils and it's being looked at for pfas around the around the airports with the uh, the firefighting foam as well as soils contaminated with heavy metals and and with some success but that's why we have to be very very careful where where we put the seed in the ground and, and have our testing regimes to do that and not all countries would follow those those um regimes they're not required to or don't have to do that so um that, that quality or safety piece is critical. Yeah. And that puts an interesting spin. Uh, I could imagine, you know, like landing in Sydney airport and it's um, surrounded by hemp plants. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be a good look. Yeah. Good look. <laughs> yeah. Um, so look, uh, let's, let's explore the, uh, the grant process. So one of the, um, uh, one of the, the main, a lot of questions that come on to uh, our AMA podcast is is the grant pro, uh, process uh, everywhere from uh, businesses who are just starting out to to obviously larger businesses. What's me? What's your journey been like? So I, I while we have a um, we have our parent company in Eco Fiber, I've been largely um, left to set up this food business, which is which has been great, a wonderful journey. So the first thing I did, uh, I have a network in the food industry. And one of those uh, that I know to do is go and you make contact with the local government groups and, and food groups. So I'm a member of, I joined the Central Coast Food Alliance, um, which, which is heavily linked to the government, um, but also, also supports you as well. So if there's any, I, again, I apologize, I'm talking to food, but if there's any local industry groups you can join, they, they're always great at facilitating or, or building a network for yourself to help um, and and the government the local government um, 
both federal and state are all, have been extremely helpful. So I went to, it was actually uh, a Central Coast meeting where I met um, a couple of the federal and state um, government um, with the colleagues now in the in the business, and they they've been uh, extremely helpful in, in letting me know what's going on, but also helping me on a journey of where export in particular uh, or other grants are available. So the the key was getting out there, finding out what's available, and I've had no issue. We've got actually three grants on the go now. We have the entrepreneurs grant, the innovations, and an export grant. So. Um, <clears throat> We, we've been and, and I've had no issues except for it being hemp actually with when it comes to the legal teams in government the, the word hemp does does get them a bit twitchy when it gets to the lawyers but it, it, it's doable um, uh, and I've had I've been helped all the way through that with both uh, state state colleagues in both uh, Queensland and New South Wales as well as the federal federal groups yeah well, that's that's good to know um and i like that tip about joining your local uh industry group as well um that's that's obviously yeah that that's great for connections just even if it's just seeing other facilities and what they do you don't have to be in the same industry and i've always been aware i don't have to see a, a food factory to to learn from systems or processes that they're uh, or, or, or um plans they have with their people or, or opportunities that, that they're taking. There's always something you can learn from any other industry. Um, and the Central Coast one, it, it is all food based, but there's there's every type of food. And there's big boys in Mars and Sanitarium are in there, down to small players that are just setting up ice cream shops and, and started to do their own small parts of export as well. So it's great. There's potential new customers come through that for me, but also uh, it's a, it's a like-minded group where you can share problems and challenges. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, uh, uh, for, for me, one of the keys uh, for, for running a business or being, you know, a, a management level of a business is having a, a strong network. And yes. like you said, um, just that, uh, you know, we're a member of uh, Carb Cl uh, uh, Club of United Business, we're BNI, BX, and all of the big networking groups around Australia. And one of the things that we've always got out of this is just being able to. You know, if you're having a hard day, just give someone a chat, you know, get on the floor, uh, the phone with someone, someone that you can trust and uh, have a chat. Or as uh, as you mentioned, you know, if there's a business problem, you can just sit down and, and have a uh, discuss a possible yeah, yeah. solution. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I think mentors and networking groups are super, super, super important. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it took me it took me a while to to realize the value until I got actively involved, and then uh, you know for me the penny dropped. Uh, and I'm right, sure that's right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's and it's it's ironic. The, the reason I'm here is through the T the tech group and Simon, a colleague or friend of in your current groups. I was in a group yeah. with Simon, so and, and they were they were they were from every. Uh, they weren't just manufacturing the tech groups. They were great. Um, you know, they pitch you at a similar level but um, yeah. very, very, very good at uh, being able to sound out. And it's just great to have time out of your own business to lock yourself away and not have the distractions and focus on other things um, yeah. and talk to other people about your challenges. Yeah, that's invaluable, isn't it? Um, yes, yeah. yeah, so so with your, with your grants, um, how long roughly did it go from, say, deciding that you always, maybe you, you're first aware of the grant to then having uh, the acceptance and um, um, the process after that? Yeah, it varied for each one. The export one, we'd, we'd already tapped, there was a new scheme and staying very close to, to Sharon, uh, who's my colleague that, that works for the, the government here, uh, has always kept me in touch. She's been to site and the initial one was very, very straightforward in terms of export. And they're all dollar for dollar, the ones we've got, but that, that really supports and helps, helps you move forward um, anyway. Um, the um and, and even with the new scheme they've just changed it recently so there's a new format and we're using the export grant for um our whole seed so we're selling a lot of our, our genetics into america uh for fiber crops and um that's that's been a very straightforward process very, I, i've described that as easy um there's some very straightforward forms to fill in on a portal and uh, so just a quick one did you did you um did you go through the process yourself or did you use an external advisor? No, I did it myself. Yeah. yeah. 
So it, it, it's easy enough to do yourself, I'd suggest. With, with the, the government teams are, are really helpful. Um, we've, um, the, the more challenging one was actually a product with, um, on the innovations one. So I've got mm. two, innovations and, and, and um, the entrepreneurs one. I can talk more about one. One of them's uh, I'll keep quiet about now, but in terms of the process, um, we, that was sort of cross border because I'm doing some work with Queensland government and the laboratories up there in Brisbane. And, uh, that, that was a bit more convoluted because it involved other bodies. So CSI, IRO are involved in that. Um, so we had to have uh, three way contracts involved, but again, uh, I was given a guy on the ground here in New South Wales, uh, who looked after me. He really helped, um, play, um, devil's advocate in terms of the, the what the proposals were from the team in Queensland um, in, a, in a very professional way it was it was a great we had some great three-way meetings and the only the only challenges there were actually <clears throat> signing of contracts because of delays with CSIRO and uh, which is likely COVID driven to be fair and mm -hmm. and just some um, just some wording and, and challenges around it being hemp. So there are still concerns. There are still things we have to go through, even though it's illegal food. They have to still have to destroy product afterwards. And because in Queensland, it's it's run by um, uh, it's still it's not a food in the sense it's not run by the Department of Primary Industries in terms of the hemp licensing. It's still under the Department of Health there even though it's a food product. So there are a few just interstate challenges with food. It's still legal there, absolutely, but it's just run by a different government body, which means, you know, they're used to drugs, not food. Um, so it was just a few administrative processes, but the initial forms you fill in are really straightforward. Uh, and again, you ask the right questions, you get the help. It, it's not been a problem. And, and likewise with the, we, we've been, <clears throat> one of the key things in being in a startup has been agile and we've we've had to do that and i've developed an equine product with some of our byproducts and we're using the entrepreneurs grant to to help us market that product and get it out there because it's not a space i know uh, equine but it's it's proving to be really successful um, and again that grant's going to help us push the marketing side of that and that that was really with with the um the colleague who I was given there has walked me through the process. We've filled in the forms together and, and submitted those and come back. So uh, for me, it's been a very, very straightforward process with, with very few challenges. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Um, cause today, uh, we, we, we've got, uh, a guest pretty much booked in, uh, who, who is a consultant for businesses to help them, um, uh get grants and you know, do the paperwork and whatnot and you know I'll, I'll always say that they're obviously invaluable for especially for businesses who are starting off who maybe don't even know what's available to them um but i love that flip side where um the obviously the government's made uh some of them straightforward so that you're able to uh, essentially do it yourself i mean obviously you're an experienced business owner as well so i think that would help yeah i think i think having been in food might make it I do know some of the pathways, so that might have made what yeah. I think is easy may not be for others. And again, that Central Coast Food Alliance and the connections there, um, yeah, we pay to be members of that, but it's you get more back in terms of the support uh, and connections there um, that, that has helped that process. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing is, and grant isn't necessarily, um, well, that's the one where the, the opportunities that the New South Wales uh, government has put forward, and I'm sure the other states do it in terms of the program. And I talked about South Korea earlier. Uh, the programs they run, as one example, we're in. We've we've applied and successfully uh, been entered into a program for export into South Korea, where they run a program. There's meetings every month, and you're set up into programs that allow access there. Um, so we'll be we'll be selling through a platform into South Korea, our, our retail range, and Again, there's, there's costs associated with that, but it's significantly reduced to enter onto that platform. So while they're not grants per se, there are plenty of opportunities out there and, and channels, again, speaking to food, um, where you can, if you're looking at on connected to the right websites and getting that information, there's, there's opportunities for, for all sorts of uh, growth that come through. Hmm. Well, that's great. Um, and I think, uh, uh, we'll answer this question a bit later about, you know, sort of the, what's the general future for Australian manufacturing. But um, 
uh, I, I think from our our perspective, uh, the government's obviously been more vocal about what what uh, what opportunities are out there and how it's supporting them, and um, seems like they are pumping um, more more funds into that side as well. Um, now, I'd, I'd love to just explore a little bit the uh, the the export topic and um, just a very high level. What's what's your process been in terms of uh, finding a new market to export to and then being able to go through all the loopholes to be able to achieve that? Yeah, that that is challenging. Um, <clears throat> we the, the easy exports we had was effectively to a known product in our sister company over in the US, but we wanted to piggyback on that and look to introducing food over there. Um, and even where we've had people on the ground, um, that they're not the food, the food export uh, experts. So having someone on the ground, if possible, whether that's through a consultant or, or again, through these connections you can make is, is invaluable. Um, the US was straightforward, but when we've tried to introduce seed and, and food and we, we can play on we're on a par really with connect canadians their biggest importer of hemp foods over there and um, we're not we're not far off so it's not a price thing um but it is more challenging now covid has has stifled those discussions so that has where i say it's challenging they have been disrupted significantly and, and the food service area where we were looking are, are, it's all about cost at the moment and no newness so they're sort of buckled down they're having staff shortages so that that has sort of uh, stopped those conversations um <clears throat> but what what i would say you know people talk to asia as we're going to export to asia and that's um that's a huge opportunity it, it's about doing the research where you're into where you're going and if you look at china it, itself every city is probably well the massive massive um number of people and very very different just in each city itself so um <clears throat> broadly speaking it's easy to say we're going to go to china you need to be very very clear i'd say which province you want to go to and how you're going to target that um china's a no china for hemp foods is off even though they're the one of the biggest hemp foods producers or hemp growers in the world um, we can't take our food into china um but we've been very careful researching um I, mainly from the compliance piece and you have to do that on food and fresh produce the compliance and, and quarantine requirements or, or uh, biosecurity requirements are key to be able to get there um, and there have been hemp players that have been caught out um, going into countries where they, they, they weren't able to um, because of uh, you know some nuances in the laws and so that well, food was allowed but it had to come from certain parts so um, research is key having people on the grounds if possible would be ideal um and and we we have started in south korea and we're we're, we're on the program um with the new south wales government that's going to help that we see an opportunity there through we we have been fortunate in being able to access a person who uh has been a consultant to the business uh for for both the us side of the business and us so i've had some time and opportunities with him and that's helped us point us point us in the right direction to focus and then and tackle one at a time yeah okay so um now my next question is probably more about the the future of your business uh obviously uh the mia podcast uh user base is growing uh is there anything that you would say that you would need in your business uh now maybe a connection with a certain type of industry or type of person um that you would like just to put a, a shout out now just to um see see who responds um for us it's it's mainly uh, i guess it's still we're still looking we're still a very as a, as a growing business but a growing industry hemp's looking for customers that um I, I see hemp still on its journey it is on the shelf in woolworths but it's um we we want to take on we'd have all heard about the plant-based um movements it's, it's not really a movement it's it's reality that plant-based foods are becoming more prominent and will play a much bigger part in our diets and and anyone who wants to consider hemp proteins um in in the human space or even equine we're getting we're getting some phenomenal feedback with our uh it's a, it's a low sugar low starch feed product that's um we're getting some great results with so any any people that's uh 
in the health space or, or other industries using proteins and want plant-based proteins, you know, the hemp should be, a, or it would be great to talk to people and see hemp as a consideration there. Okay, good to know, good to know. Uh, I'm sure we'll get some responses. And um, yeah, as always with our with our uh, show notes, um, uh, we always have a, a section on there. If you jump to the actual MIA podcast uh, landing page, that's where we've got our feedback forms where you can make inquiries. And um, and uh, if you, you know, if you're a business who would like to connect with uh, Kieran, uh, jump to our landing pages as well. So look, um, we're getting closer towards the 30 minute mark. So um, I wanted to, or was there anything else you wanted to, uh, to, to explore what, before we jump into the final question of, uh, of the, the podcast? Um, I think uh, if you ask the final question, I could probably touch on it. There's a few things I was going to touch on in terms of the journey through startup and being, uh, you know, uh, what, what we've done specifically, but I can probably touch that on your question, on your question. Yeah, actually let's, let's explore that. Cause the, the last question is about, uh, that general where's, where's Australian manufacturing heading. So, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing, let's, let's, uh, hear a yeah. little bit about food. So I, I know, again, I, I selfishly, and I don't apologize for speaking to food because of what it, I know, I think the food processing and manufacturing space is, and will be on the up. I think, um, one of the things that COVID has exposed supply chains, definitely, but it's also exposed some of the sustain. I think consumers and some of the uh, colleagues in the large retailers have recognized that, um, they've been exposed, but also from the supply chain itself and not just food in other commodities too. Um, but, um, also that sustainability piece has been highlighted and, and made people realize where, where they actually are getting stuff from and, and it is available in Australia. So I think that's going to create opportunities that if you, if you're there and ready, you can, you can pounce on those and, and see those opportunities. F food's easy in some respects, because I think the consumer will, they want Australian. They've probably often um just gone to imported because of the price differential and i think the the opportunities with technology in in agriculture and food are going to make that uh or certainly make the gap gap smaller um we we've seen in, in my past role there was a lot of technology being used in, in farming and in the processing of, of all the salads that um can keep that price at, at a reasonable level and, and certainly competitive and we used to look to to the US, uh, Asia and the UK for, for and Europe for industries and what they were doing. So it's always good to have, and that's that network, have a look at what's out there and what's coming and how you can apply that to your own business. Um, but I certainly see in, um, in those uh, f food, I think will, will grow. We want the consumers becoming much more connected to what's going into their bodies uh, and they want that small su shortage supply chain for their own health but also they're aware of the um the sustainability challenges that come the air miles that come with a lot of their food and uh, i think that's going to be growing and we've seen <clears throat> you know we see that we've we've we stuck by australian we could have imported it some years ago and chose not to we wanted to, to grow in australia um and that's where a lot of the work we do on genetics helps we improving yields in the field so the farmers are able to um get you know they, they could if they get more kilos per hectare that it's more beneficial for them too which helps us get that uh, that price on the shelf much lower um but but in that and i one thing i'd say to everyone which is what we've done and i did setting up the business we did is just being agile is critical we we were in a new industry in hemp uh, we didn't build a Rolls Royce to start with. Um, I like the idea of a, where you can automate, but mm -hmm. we do it almost in a stage way. We pick areas where it's, it, we, we, we can and almost bolt on automation. So we've, we've grown over the last three years and I'm having challenges right now where we're full, which is wonderful. Uh, and now we can commit to, we're sweating our assets and committing to, to some automation because automation can stifle your growth because you you have to be more bespoke in what you do but we needed to really find out what was working and and what what we'd set up as semi-automated versus automated lines so agility is is critical uh being aware and then being agile in that and in, in certainly in a, in a startup or growth growth business yeah 
Yeah, and I love uh, like for for us. I mean, we we deal more in the sort of the the tech space. So for us, um, uh, automation is is more on the tech side. Um, but uh, you know, obviously that's 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 important for I think for any startup to once you've got your your procedures and your your system starting to work, automate anything that's repetitive yeah. when you can. Uh, and obviously on the physical side as well. Well, actually, just just on that, John, the, the tech is critical to us. And I was very fortunate. Um, I've been a big advocate of um, uh, software systems for the compliance side of food businesses. Right. And I was fortunate. I, I pitched and, and got, uh, and the CEO was, gave, me, gave me the money to buy um, a paperless quality management system. And that's been phenomenal. I'd say that that's worth exploring. That's that's saving me at least two, two and a half people. Any food business knows a lot of their QAs will end up just being archivists. Um, and, and your ability to, you need to be able to pull or trace your food products forwards or backwards, either to the retailer and customers or back to the producers. Very well, within four hours is your limit. The quicker you can do that, the better. So there's a real food safety reason to be able to do it. but these systems allow your people on the floor who are touching and feeling the product to focus on that rather than focus on filling paperwork in. So your your line operatives become your QAs. The system helps them uh, and then it's all archived in the cloud. So I have easy, quick access to all of that. So I was fortunate in being able to get that early, but it's, it, it's saving me for the cost of probably half a person, it's saving me two or three. Wow, that's incredible! I didn't realize that had had such a such a huge impact. So, um, yeah, if you are in the uh, you know the food agriculture, I guess those those types of industries, I'm, I'm guessing that's going to help them as well. Yes, yes, hugely. And it's, it's it can be a tough to move when you've got paper systems in place, although they set it up nicely. It's change is difficult for people, and, and yeah. some businesses don't like that. It's it's. It, they're too big change can be a scary thing and um i'd certainly be advocating to to grab that bull by the horns if you just, it might be pushing a big boulder up a hill initially but when it gets to the top it will roll down very very quickly and mm. uh, and you will benefit le in leaps and bounds with those systems yeah we say that a lot um uh, generally there's there's uh, an element of resistance somewhere in large companies yeah um you know if someone's been working there for 20 30 years and that's the way it's always been done um, but you're absolutely right to sort of the, the journey on those aha moments as well. Um, once the systems are used effectively. And I, I wanted to just jump back to one of the points that you, you mentioned as well, which is the, um, the concept of, 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 uh, sustainability, which I think is driving Australian manufacturing. That's probably a topic that people aren't as aware of, but there's the obvious one, supply chain shortages, there's, uh, you know, shipping costs, et cetera. But sustainability is one that is obviously there's a social movement behind it, but um, I think it's still a little bit quiet for probably the general population in terms of manufacturing. Um, and uh, you know, if uh, if Australians are able to to choose local, to uh, to produce locally, etc., um, that has uh, such a huge impact on that sustainability layer. And helps That's businesses right. drive forward to. That's right. To, uh, and the bigger businesses are being targeted and have to do that. So if you're supporting yeah. those big businesses as your customers, then you will win. Uh, we're seeing, yeah. you know, we see that, but they'll have their own targets. And if you're helping them meet them, that will help. We're certainly seeing that on our, our hemp fiber and, and the ability to put the our hemp char or carbon black into as a as rather than a petroleum base product to to color plastics and anything that's black plastic has been colored we can do that with with hemp based products and and food was set up the same way we want every pro we've put every process under one roof so we're not shipping byproducts all around the country uh the seed does come up to us from tasmania and then that's it till it's a finished product going out the door and, and yeah. using every, every piece of that seed that comes in we use it all which yeah is that's that's great, because um, yeah, I mean, we were we were chatting with um, one of our, our clients uh, just last week. Actually, they they're a national um, solar company, and they were saying, yeah, you know, there's businesses that are under pressure to have that that whole net zero um, yes. you know, philosophy as well. And even if you want to do supply to say, you know, your, your Bunnings or your Woolworths, you know, the big big national companies, you've got to at least have a plan. 
uh, a net zero plan at worst. At best, you're actually implementing it. So that's right. Yeah. Um, it's good to know. Yeah. So um, yeah, I guess the final ver verdict, Kieran. Uh, you know, our tagline is "Will Australian manufacturing ever return to the glory days of the '60s?" Uh, for you, is it a yes or a no? I, I don't think it'll look like it did in the '60s. Um, yeah. But yes, I think there's huge opportunity with it within the tech space, with the with the uh, knowledge uh, and insight we have in Australia. In the food business, definitely, uh, we've got some great, uh, great agriculture and great technology being utilised there, and the processing businesses can just uh, leap on from that. But across industry and manufacturing, I think in in niche and, and high tech, yes, definitely, will look different, but there's definitely opportunities. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, and uh, well, actually, because we're in conducting some research just around you know the statistics, gross statistics, all that as well. Obviously, uh, petroleum's uh, deep, deep decline at the moment. Uh, but there are some uh, definitely food and agriculture is one of those areas of uh, manufacturing that is on the uh, definitely an up uh, an upward trend. Yeah, uh, and we'll put those in the show notes as well, so you can see the stats. But uh, it's very interesting uh, seeing yes. where the shifts are. Yeah. So um, thank you again, Kieran. Thank you. Thanks again for your time um, and uh, being able to. I think just share your journey. Uh, and uh, we're very grateful that you're able to just to provide some advice to some of our listeners as well. Um, for those who are listening, please jump to the uh, MIA podcast uh, landing page on the internet. We've got the, uh, the link in the show notes, and that also has the links to all our other podcasts as well. Uh, we will, in the coming episodes, uh, we'll have a grants expert as well for those that you're itching, sitting on the edge of your seat, who want to know all about grants. But uh, yeah, thank you again, Kieran. And Thank you, uh, we, we will see you all in our next show. Thank you. Thanks very much.